hi. How's everybody today? Happy April Fool's Day. Uh, I hope everyone is uh, adjusting to our new normal for the time being. And I'm glad to be here to offer a little bit of distraction with these really fun and super easy earrings. I like to play with my beads, as you all know. And uh, I also love the new family of metal elements, the symbol elements, which are initially designed for specific beads, but I like to see what else they can be used for and encourage you guys all to really play because these are just a fabulous family of findings that are so, so versatile. So anyway, today, as promised, I'm going to show you how to make these cute little swags of a few super duos and 15s on an element called Sitanos. The Sitanos originally was designed as an ending for size eights, meaning that it was configured so that a certain number of eights would fit nicely in between the two legs of the Sitanos. It's the Sitanos two because it has two legs. And you can see there's a little loop right at the top of it. And then each of the legs has a little hole through it. So you beaters, you're probably thinking, okay, this would be attached to so many things. It would be so much fun to play with. And it is. I chose the gold. Comes in gold, silver. Here's a little sample that I did with the silver. Pink and gray for me. But... What I showed you on uh, my Facebook promo page was that I had flipped the colors. First green row, first blue row, just a little subtle asymmetry, which just is a, a little whimsy for ushering the spring. How's that? Okay, so you ready? Let's get started. I do have a tutorial. It will be posted tomorrow sometime, I'm hoping. Um, where it has only four illustrations. Nice and easy. Here we go. Let's show you the final one. And nice big illustrations. So I bet all of you could be able to do this. Thanks. I'm glad you like it. Switching colors. Yeah, my, my partner in crime at the Beadsmith, Les, the other Leslie, is watching. Leslie Pope. And I see, so thank you for joining. All right, so we're gonna have super duos in two colors. You're gonna have two Sitanos symbol metal elements. And you're also going to have size 15s in a complementary color. I'm using galvanized gold, 15, so I'll pour a little of those out. You know, I never thought I would be using 15s. When I first started beading and, and was really getting into it, they were just too small for me, but I have to tell you that they're really, really facile and, uh, and convenient because they just fit so nicely when you play with your beads. Now, because I'm using 15s, Here's my fancy needle case. I'm going to use a size 12 needle, which goes really nicely through the 15s. And you want to use a thread. You can use really any, whatever your favorite beading thread is. You can use Fireline or Nymo or one of the other brands. Because it's not a weight-bearing piece, it doesn't have to be as, as strong or uh, free of stretch. But... Fireline is really my go-to. So I'm going to pull out, there it is, my old beat-up roll. That's almost done. I'm going to cut about 24 inches of thread, and I'm going to string it with my number 12 needle. And here's my stringing tip. Take a chain nose pliers, flatten the end of your thread. Pull it down between your fingers so it's just a little poppy seed. And then you're going to bring the eye of the needle straight down to the thread. There you go. goes through. Okay. 
So I just leave a little bit of a tail through my needle and I'm gonna pick up a any kind of an odd bead to use as a stopper bead. If you're like me, you usually have something floating around on your desk. So uh, I'm gonna see what I have. Oh, here's a little, here's a silver bead, okay. So a stopper bead, if you're really a real beginner, you're gonna string the bead and you're gonna bring it down leaving, oh, like a four inch tail. You wanna leave a comfortable enough amount uh, to um, sew in later. Hi, Lisa, thanks. Lisa's saying it looks like a beautiful project. I so appreciate you tuning in. All right, so you string your stopper bead and then you sew through it again. And what this does is it creates a slider bead, slides back and forth, but it'll prevent your strung beads from, from uh, being lost. Okay. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, let's, we'll do the green as the first row. We're gonna string six sets of a super duo and a 15, and then a seventh super duo. So, oh, also, don't forget to check both holes of any multi-hole beads that you uh, make sure it's clear so you're not sewing through one hole and then later suddenly you come upon a clog because there's sometimes mutants. So six sets of a super duo and a 15 and then a seventh super duo. One, two, ah, 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 <laughs> three, Four. This is how I like to hold my needle so I can guide it with my fingers. So I have five super duos and a 15, six and a 15 and a seventh super duo. And all those holes were clear. Now I'm going to sew from the inside out through the Satana's finding. So you're only going to collect you're only going to um, connect through one side of the finding for now. So it's going to look like that. Then we're going to string a little turnaround bead. This is one of my favorite techniques to use so that thread doesn't show and you don't have to come out and over a bead or a finding. So I'm picked up my 15 and I'm going to sew back through that same leg of the Satanos. and I'm gonna pull my beads up to it. Just like that. So you have that little turnaround. Let's see if you can see it right there. Instead of having thread showing around the components and the beads. Nice nifty trick. After sewing that 15, we're gonna sew all the way back through the whole line of beads. And I want you to, oh look. I strung two in between here instead of one. This means I get to show you another trick. I'm going to show you how to carefully break off that bead without ruining your thread. And the way to do this is to take a crimping pliers. Crimping pliers has a nose that doesn't meet. There's a little hole there so you can fit your bead that you're gonna crack off into that hole and it's not gonna mush the thread. So here we go. Oh, I've been wanting to show you guys this trick for a while. So I have my extra bead in between that nose and I'm just gonna give it a crack and I don't mar the thread at all because the nose of the needle doesn't squash the thread. How's that? Pretty cool, right? Okay, now I have some extra space. I'm gonna bring my slider bead up and keep my beads together and go back to where I was sewing through all of the beads that have been strung so far. Now be careful and take your time. You don't wanna skip any. So you can do a few at a time to go back through the whole line of beads. And uh, I apologize for not, acknowledge, uh, not acknowledging everybody that's watching. Um, it's a little hard for me to see my phone screen at the same time that I'm working here from my home studio. I don't have my camera person, Leslie Pope, to follow me around. 
Okay, now notice I did not go through the stopper bead. That stays free. So we're going to now attach the other end of the finding of the Satanos symbol element. So keep your tail thread with your stopper bead out of the way and you're going to go from inside out through the other leg of the symbol Satanos. Like this. From the inside out. Now we're going to do another little turnaround 15 and go back in through the leg of the Satanos, the end, and we're going to tie the tail and the working thread together here. So let's do that. And you're gonna to wanna to pull gently so it comes up. There we go. Now you can leave your stopper bead on if you want, just as a safety, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the two ends here and we're going to tie a square knot and you want to make sure you don't get caught and that knot is going to go in between the last super duo and the end of the finding so I did a half hitch and now I'm going to do another half hitch to complete my square knot and make sure that that stays on the inside between the end. Okay, you can take your stopper bead off, I guess, now. That tail's gonna stay there for now. We're gonna sew it in later. So, hi Claire, hi Debbie, hi Kathy. I'm just taking some. Oh, so you, you use that trick too to break your extra beads off? Isn't that a cool trick? Crimping pliers used for something other than crimping. How about that? All right, so we're now, according to the illustrations, on the left side of this. So we're ready to sew through the super duo to do a turnaround to add the second row of super duos. And now we do that. So again, we're hiding the thread. Let's see if I can hold this so you can see. Sorry, I know it's always a little fiddly. All right. So right now I'm in between, my thread's coming out in between the end of the finding and the super duo. And I'm going to do a little turnaround. I'm going to sew in through the hole that's already stitched on that last super duo. And then I'm going to go out and the reason I'm doing it this way is so the thread that is showing a little bit on the inside here is going to be on the inside and it will be hidden when I add the next row of beads. So I'm out here and I have to do a turnaround. I'm going to do my little 15, size 15 turnaround, string of 15, go back into the hole that I'm exiting. And now I'm in position to string a super duo in between each of the existing super duos. So I'm going to bring in these. These are actually called green opal green white luster, but they have this beautiful turquoisey look. And I don't know what it is about these two colors, this kind of lime green. I think it's opaque green. The super duo is opaque green. And, uh, they're just very festive and fiesta-like and springy and so la la la, there you go. So you can see I'm just picking up a super duo, sewing through the next super duo. Make sure your beads are turned around, stringing only six because they go in between. And I'm going to sew out through here. Now we're going to have to do a turnaround again because we want to add the little the little picots of 15s. So here's how I did that. Again, I'm trying to minimize the thread that shows. So I'm going to do a turnaround again. Whoops. 
And this is all, when you look at the illustrations and see the tutorial, you'll see that it's, it's pretty clear. Yes, I, the colors will be listed. They definitely will. Lisa, thanks for asking who she wanted to know if all the colors I'm using uh, could be listed. Um, I'll try to find the colors of the pink and gray ones too. They are not in their original packaging, but I think I can lay my hands on them. So what I'm doing now is I've picked up a 15. I'm coming out the outside of the second hole of the Super Duo. And I'm going to sew back into that hole of the green Super Duo and in row one and the second blue one, the first blue one in row two. So I'm going to have another little 15 on the hole of the green. And now I'm going to sew out through the open hole of the blue one and I'm going to do another turnaround with a 15 and all of these turnarounds with the 15s are to reposition your needle there you go now you can see I'm ready to add the little picots so this is real fun it's it's an another easy trick you can do it with lots of different beads I'm going to pick up four 15s and to make a picot with beads, when you string the beads, you skip the last one that you picked up. And so, so I'm skipping the fourth one and I'm sewing back through the third one. And I'm going to pull the bead snug, and now I'm going to string the other leg of that picot with just two 15s. And I'm going to sew through, whoop, get on there. There's my two 15s, and I'm going to sew back through the next Super Duo. And there's my little picot. And you want to sort of nudge it with your fingers so that it stays nice and centered. And points out like that. So I'm going to keep going across four 15s so back through the third one whoops that was a faulty bead there we go that was weird Let's do that again. April Fool's. It was my April Fool's bead. Four 15s. Go back through the third one. Pull them up. String the two for the other side and go through the super duo. There you go. All right. I'm going to try to pick up speed here so we can get through these. And I'll show you how to end it. Laura, how are you doing? How are you doing in Italy? Holy cow. We live in strange times. Did I pick up five beads? I did. Okay. I'm going to do my little trick again with the crimper. I should only have two beads there. There we go. I mean, a lot of you guys, I know who you are and, and our paths have crossed in, in lovely ways, either on the internet or uh, at bead shows. And I know you guys use a lot of these tricks. And uh, you can also testify that no matter how many times you do something and how experienced you are, sometimes stuff just doesn't work out. But this is shaping up nicely. Four 15s back through the top, string two more, sew through the next super duo. And when you're finished, you can go back and nudge these so that they sit nice and stick out perpendicular from the piece. But look how this arch is like this. The reason this does this is because I have the little 15s in there. If I had used larger beads, it wouldn't have wanted to curl like this. So here's another reason why 15s can really add some, some interesting effects to your work. All right, 
Last little pico. Four fifteens. Go back. And can you see how I'm using my fingers too to, to help myself and keep thread out of the way? These are all muscle movements that you learn as you grow as a beater. And for those of us who have been beating for a long time, we have sort of our vocabulary of little manual tricks that we do. There we go. Look how cute that is. So we're getting ready to finish. What I want to do here is do another turnaround with a 15 so I can hide my thread. And I'm going to sew back through the hole that I just came through. Now we're going to end off the thread, uh, the, your working thread. We want to weave it into the piece to secure. And you certainly could go back through the picots if you wanted to, but I'm going to do, I'm going to sew out through the two first two super first two super duos and the 15 and then reversing sew back into my piece so i won't really need to have a little knot or anything but i'm going to do a half hitch on some existing thread see i'm going through the two aligned super duos make sure i'm not going to get caught on my little pico now I'm actually, I'm going to sew through that 15 again, cause that's gonna keep my thread from pulling through. And I'm gonna sew through one super duo and do a half hitch around the existing thread that's arching here. So I'm gonna come up through my piece in between the beads and loop through my thread to make a half hitch. That's like a half of a knot, just like that. You don't even see it. And then I'm gonna just weave my end in and through the beads. And just a couple beads. You wanna make sure that your end isn't gonna come loose there. So I'm just going through the first and second row super duos right there and then you can i'm going to bring my thread zap up my battery was dying but let's see if it'll perform one last time there you go and voila i will string a needle on the tail and go back into the piece to secure it. Remember, this was knotted in the beginning. And you're done. You can take an ear wire and string it right through. Close it up. Yes, I know that actually is silver. It was on my desk, so there you go. So what do you guys think? Pretty easy, pretty fast, very lightweight. If you like longer dangles, because these hang kind of close to your ear, you could certainly put a couple jump rings to make your own little chain and attach an ear wire to that. Could be a pretty dainty little pendant. So of course my second one would be to reverse the colors and do that little asymmetry. When you wear these, you can see if anybody notices that your earrings are just a little different. So. That's it, you guys, for this April Fool's Day 2020. The symbol Satanus 2, technically for size 8s, but I'm using it in a whole different way with super duos and 15s to make the little picots. So you can find these beads, and they will be listed on the website when this is, uh, pattern is posted. So I'm Leslie Rogowski, creative director for The Beadsmith. Today is April Fool's Day 2020. We love beads. Thanks for watching. Bye.